What makes a top five player? To answer that question in sports, people often look towards statistics I like to call holy grail stats. Stuff like wins above replacement, player efficiency rating, and PFF player grades. These are all attempts to summarize a player's value by boiling every single thing they do on a court or a field into one singular number. These stats can be really cool. They give us the ability to measure present players against the past, to compare players at different positions or in different roles, and of course, like everyone in the Smash scene loves, they serve as sweet sweet argument fuel. But the reason I call these holy grail statistics is because, in the end, what they offer is a myth. You can't actually reduce a player's value to one single number. Well, obviously, you can try, but in the process of alchemizing everything into a singular number, you necessarily have to flatten a lot of what actually makes a great player a great player. You have to take some shortcuts, and sometimes those shortcuts can lead you to very, very weird places. They can tell you that an MVP award winner like the Philadelphia Phillies first baseman Ryan Howard is mediocre, or they can tell you that Chris Paul is a top five NBA player of all time and Michael Jordan isn't. So why do I bring this up? Well, this is Lucky Stats. It's a really cool and ambitious Melee data project from Lucky 7's Melee attempting to rank every single Melee tournament player ever. It uses ELO rating, the same system used by chess federations and the system underpinning a ton of rank systems in video games. One of the coolest things about this system, in my opinion, is the sheer amount of data it incorporates, currently including just about everything that has ever been on StartGG and with plans to go even deeper and include older brackets from sites like Challenge in the future. And hey, Shoutouts to Challenge. If you know what that is, you're a real one. Leave a comment. Leave a comment. Hell yeah. This means that Melee players can use this tool to compare themselves to every single player in Melee's history. Lucky7 shared a graph of the distribution of ratings for every player in their database, and everybody had a ton of fun looking up their numbers in it and seeing where they landed on the graph. The tool is linked in the description if you're curious, by the way. Anyway, Fiction's been on a crazy run lately, although I can't blame you if you haven't noticed. He hasn't entered a major since Tipped Off 16 back in June 2025, where he picked up wins over Nikki and Moff on his way to a 13th place finish. It's what he's done Done since then that's crazy though. On June 24th, Fiction finished second at SoCal Melee Local McLeod's Melee Co. number 12, dropping a pair of sets to the visiting JMOOC. Since then, Fiction has entered 22 tournaments in Southern California and has won every single one of them. These include some wins over nationally ranked opponents, revenge on JMOOC at McLeod's Melee Co. number 13 one week later, wins over Preeminent and Moff twice at Fillerfest at the end of July, and a pair of wins over Null at McLeod's Melee Co. number 18 in August. Fiction is an incredible player on a great run. He was ranked as the 40th best player of all time when Melee Stats put out their rankings in 2021, and that was before he reinvented himself as a Falco main and rattled off three more years of top 30 play. But thanks in large part to his local dominance over the past six months, Lucky Stats is now making a pretty shocking claim. That's right, statistically, Fiction is a better player than Armada. A player never ranked higher than 12th, now above one of the players perpetually in the argument for greatest of all time. What exactly is going on here? Can we trust these numbers? And what does this kind of thing mean about the usefulness of tools like Lucky Stats? To start answering these questions, let's see what Lucky Sevens actually has to say. In this tweet, they say, it's obviously a statistical outlier in a sense. It doesn't mean he's better than Armada, but it does mean something, fascinating nonetheless. The existence of this exact kind of statistical outlier is why the Smash community has never really relied on ELO or similar systems like True Skill for global rankings. The kind of outlier Lucky Sevens describes is one that's well known to exist in ELO systems. It's one that the United States Chess Federation had to deal with thanks to a man named Claude Bloodgood, who happened to be sentenced to life in prison in Virginia in 1970 for murdering his mother and then dedicated his newly found free time to a chess hobby. So. That's cool. Uh, Bloodgood wasn't new to chess though. In fact, he had previously been chess's version of a stats nerd, the rating statistician for Virginia's State Chess Federation. Bloodgood arranged and entered a number of prison chess competitions, and he was leagues beyond his opponents thanks to all of that past experience. Slowly but surely, even though none of his opponents were highly ranked masters or anything even close to it, Bloodgood amassed one of the greatest ELO ratings in the entire country, peaking at 2759 in 1997, the second highest rating in the United States. Now, now, some claim that Bloodgood was using his eldritch stat nerd knowledge to rig the system, but Bloodgood himself claimed that he saw this coming and even wrote to the USCF to warn them of the way that quote-unquote closed pool tournaments like this can artificially inflate ratings like his. Regardless, the USCF wound up changing their rules as a result, introducing requirements to participate at major events to earn certain titles like Master and Senior Master, no matter how high your ELO gets. 
But before we get too deep into chess and ELO and uh, federal punishment, I guess I want to thank Into the AM, who is paid to be mentioned in today's video. Ah, New Year's resolutions. People are decluttering, pretending they like going to the gym, and maybe redefining themselves and their fashion by investing in pieces they'll actually wear day to day. Into the AM's Everyday Essentials gives you all of the fall styles you could possibly need. Timeless designs that are affordable, comfortable, and look great. Longtime fans of my channel already know this by now, but pretty much all of my go-to fits are from Into the AM. Whether it's for everyday working, exercise, or going out on the town, these outfits are not only stylish, but also incredibly flexible. I can mix and match into a ton of repeatable pieces, and that's exactly what made me a huge fan of this company, and I also think it's part of the reason I've been partnered with them for like several years now. They're pretty much always running a discount, and if you use my promo code WALT at checkout or go to intotheam.com slash WALT, you'll get an additional 10% off the top. And uh, Insider, I guess, I'm sure some of you YouTube freaks already know that partnerships like these keeps the wheels turning over at Rotated Downwards for Walter Enterprises, so thank you for supporting that. Thanks again to Into the AM for supporting the channel, and now let's get back into the video. In chess, there's Claude Bloodgood. In Melee, there's Hanky Panky. Melee statistician Ambus Sinister showed in a 2018 post that one popular variant of ELO ranking would have listed Melee's top five at the time as Armada, Hungrybox, Mango, Mewtwo King, and Hanky Panky. Hanky Panky was a strong Peach player from Ohio who played for most of the 2010s and peaked at 71st on SSBM rank 2014. He didn't travel a lot, but often won or placed very highly at Ohio locals and regionals. He was a great player and also pretty clearly not the fifth best player in the world. The whole post is worth a read, but the Claude Bloodgood slash Hanky Panky problem is not the only issue presented when trying to use ELO to judge melee competition. There's also some weird math involved with double elimination brackets where incentives can get warped in a way to incentivize losing early in winner's bracket in order to rack up tons of wins in losers. There's a lot of other interesting thoughts about how data can and should be used to make conclusions in the piece, so again, check it out. There's the answer to why we don't use this kind of tool for official rankings, but I do agree with the final piece of Lucky 7's evaluation of fiction passing Armada in the rankings. It is fascinating, despite all of this. There are currently four players above Armada on these rankings, and the other three are the current top three in the world, Zane, Cody Schwab, and Hungrybox. The rest of the top 10 are a collection of former gods and current top level threats. Also, for the record, before Fiction's recent insane run of local dominance, he had a 2774 rating, which, as of script writing on October 30th, would have placed him 26th between Ginger and Spark. This stretch, in which he's gone 130 and 1 in sets, has elevated him 22 spots on this ranking. This elevation is clearly a result of recency bias, that much is obvious, but recency bias is an inherent feature of ELO ratings. In fact, if you don't don't want your rankings to have recency bias, you definitely should not be using ELO. ELO also rewards quantity, not necessarily over quality, but if you play enough matches and never lose, you can make the number go up in a pretty crazy way, as Fiction has been showing us. Which I think gets us to the actual most fascinating part of Fiction passing Armada on these rankings. That's just how insane Armada's career was. The Lucky Stats ELO rating is not a ranking that should be kind to Armada. No matter how good he was, he has not played a melee set in over seven years. The population of high ELO players was much, much smaller back then. Fiction could go to a local and play against players like SF and Swizz, who both rank in the top 500 in the Lucky system, and occasionally even players like JMook, Moff, Preeminent, and Null, all of whom currently rank in the Lucky Stats top 75. And even when Armada was active, he just didn't have access to a high quantity of matches against high-level competition. He was limited to playing in North America for short periods of time, and then he'd return to Europe where his opportunities to play in major brackets would be few and far between. So I think it is truly a monument to his achievements in his time playing Melee that, in order to pass Armada even on this kind of ranking, you have to either be a top 3 player for years running, or be a top 30 level player for a decade and then turn into Melee Jesus for 6 months at your locals. I think it might be a natural reaction to reject a ranking that tells you Fiction was a better melee player than Armada, but it's important to realize that any attempt to flatten a melee player's skill into one number can never tell you the whole story. Despite these limitations, tools like Lucky Stats can still be fun in my opinion, and even valuable in my opinion, as long as we're informed about what they're good at measuring and what they're bad at measuring. Lucky Stats is a ranking that's built to be dynamic and respond to recent streaks of hot performance, which makes it great as a quick and easy way to synthesize years of melee data and 
plot out trends in performance across a huge pool of players. When it comes to determining who's the greatest of all time, for instance, it has some admittedly pretty severe blind spots, but that's fine because nobody should be asking this tool to do that anyway. Lucky Stats actually has another ranking on its site, one that's tuned towards answering the ranking question called the Lucky Ranks, although this one's focused on the yearly ranking question, not the all-time one. This ranking takes a similar approach to tennis ranking ladders, assigning points to tournament placements depending on the prestige of those tournaments with super majors like Supernova and Genesis valued the highest. Hey, look at that. It's that thing I told you I talk about in the last video, but yeah, cool. Subscribe. Anyway, in the case of fiction, he ranks 46th in the world this year on that ranking between Calvar and Plup. This ranking gives a tiny amount of points for local wins and only counts your seven best finishes, which means it's probably underrating how well fiction has been playing over the past six months. But because this system wants to focus on super majors and majors, it has no choice but to do that, given Fiction's limited major attendance this year. So I guess one of the questions we want to answer at the end of this video is, how good is Fiction actually? The answer is probably somewhere in between what these two rankings are suggesting. ELO is built in a way that's guaranteed to overrate this run Fiction is on, and Lucky Ranks are built in a way that ignores it to an unreasonable degree if you're simply trying to answer the question of how good he is right now. The very boring but very real answer answer to that question is that we won't know until he enters more majors and gets more cracks at the top echelon of players. Or, secret third option, we could just read Fiction's Twitter bio. But also, regardless of the system, the answer to that question will never come from just one number. As cool as stats can be, they aren't gospel. They're tools to help us arrange our thoughts and ask smarter questions, and also tools that can help us find fun stories for us to talk about on our YouTube channels. Like, hey, have you seen this Fiction guy? He hasn't lost for six months, or something crazy like that you should subscribe to my channel. That's that's my, there we go. And in many cases, they can still have something to teach us. Sometimes when they spit out a value that feels as inherently wrong as fiction over Armada to our melee diehards, the reason behind the outlier is genuinely something we hadn't considered before. Even if calling Ryan Howard mediocre was probably overkill, Major League Baseball talent evaluators definitely were overrating batting and underrating defense 15 years ago when Howard was at his peak, and the game has changed in the years since to reflect that. In other cases, the tool simply isn't designed to answer the question we're forcing it to. Chris Paul definitely isn't better than Michael Jordan at basketball, but the win share stat I cherry-picked isn't designed to measure postseason greatness, but rather regular season consistency and longevity. Chris Paul had 21 years of regular season consistency compared to just 15 for Jordan, two of which were after he came out of retirement with the Washington Wizards. Jordan's greatness comes instead from his postseason dominance, and it's silly to blame win shares for spitting out a bad answer to that question it shouldn't have been asked in the first place. In the end, the value of a tool always comes down to how you use it. As long as you remember projects like Lucky Stats are there to get you to start asking questions and aren't holy gospel stats, you'll be just fine. And hey, you might even have some fun doing it too. Thanks for watching. Big thank you to Avishu Stein, Bobby Wasabi, Brent Mukai, Carter Roberts, Dark Gen X, Eric is Cool, Gustavo Cantu Fernandez, James Fadman, Justin Duncan Mills, Kyle, Kyle Carlin, Marshall Bradley, and Sam Wright.